In this video, I will write the first program to access and display information on the LCD. As always, we'll start with the skeleton code. We have our standard um, include, we have our main routine, and we have our infinite loop. To make things easier, I'm going to introduce you to the define statement. The define statement is actually considered a macro, but that's really not important. The define statement can be used to provide a name for important numbers. It can also be used to change the name of a commonly used variable. For instance, we use the port B for the interface between the microcontroller and the, the LCD. And if we define a particular name for the for that port, we can we all we would really need to do is change the port name in one location and it will be automatically assigned throughout the rest of the program. So to start, let's define Mr. LCD's crib. And this will be port B. So everywhere we use the word Mr. LCD's crib, we can just assume that it will be port B. And if we just happen to need port B for something else and we need to move the LCD to another location on the microcontroller, let's say to port A for instance, all we would have to do is change it in this location and we'll be set. And like I said, we can also do this with numbers. So we're going to make the define and we're going to say the light switch, which is the enable, is on pin number five. So everywhere we're using light switch, we know that we're actually putting five in that location instead. And if we need to change that, that wire to another uh, pin on port D, then we can just change that number right here and we wouldn't have to change it all throughout our program. We can also establish the define for the control port, which is the port D. So let's go ahead and do that. Mr. LCD's control. And will be, that would be port D. And port D will be using these numbers here. Now let's do the rest of the, the switches, which is the read write and the register select and read write with 7 and the register select which we called bipolar and the mood would be we'll say bipolar mood on pin 2. Sometimes I like to make this more presentable and I will just tab it so all of them are on a line. To keep the code compact I'm only going to use define statements for things that may change or could change in the circuit. I'm going to make this port A, port B again, since we're, we have it connected to port B. And to make it easy to communicate with Mr. LCD, we're going to make some routines. And as we know, we can create our prototypes in this location. And we're going to play a game of peekaboo with, uh, with Mr. LCD. And there's nothing, uh, we're not actually going to be putting any information into that routine, so that becomes void. So in the in the prototypes, you always have to put something in in these parentheses, either the uh, establishing a variable um, declaration and the variable name, or if there's nothing, you have to put void. We also want a way to to send a character and and a way to send a command. We'll have a routine for each one of those, so we'll call it void send a command, and we need to be able to. to to send a particular command with a variable type of unsigned, which means that it's not signed, it's always going to be in the positive side, and it's going to be a character. And we'll call this variable command. And our next one is sending a character, so send a character. And this will also be unsigned character, and then we'll just call it character. So now we have our three prototypes. We can just go ahead and do a copy and paste, control C, we go down here and control V, and we can make our code blocks. We don't need the void in the actual routines, and this is just defining a skeleton for our code blocks. Take out the semicolons, and code block here, and then another code block here. So now we have a place to put our code within each routine that we're going to be setting up. You're going to find also that they're going to be um, specifically with this sending a command. We're going to have um, a few commands that we're going to be using that are really just defined as, as hexadecimal numbers or binary numbers. And this is to um, control the, the cursor movement, clearing the screen, and those types of things, if the cursor is blinking or not. And those can actually be, def um, you can actually create a define 
for each one of those. Uh, but when we get to um, creating our own library, then we can get into that. But for now, we're going to just use the, the numbers uh, to make our code concise and compact. And inside this portion, we're just going to simply, in the main, in the beginning of the main, we're actually not going to be putting much into the never-ending loop, not in this particular um, tutorial. But we'll be putting in things like, um, I want to send a command, and then we'll put, it, put a number inside. Um, let's say 0x80, um, for instance. Well, let's actually use 01, because that's the first command we're going to be using anyway. And a 01 command simply clears the screen. So let's put in that remark. And this way we'll know from for later on if we want to make defined statements, we can make a, a clear screen statement equaling this number here. And as you know, 0x01 simply equals in binary 0000001. And an example of sending a character is simply send a character. And this can be, actually let me explain one thing. Um, in my earlier videos I talked about a little bit about the environment or the user interface for this program. And you also have text clips um, in your left pane here. And you have the option of um, selecting all types of um, statements for different languages or even for what we're going to be using, ASCII characters. This is ASCII means um, American Standard Code for Information Interchange, and it's just a standard um, that was created a long time ago, as far back as I know, when I was using computers in, in the 70s. Uh, it's been, uh, the standard has been used quite a while, and you can see that you have control for, generally for computers, gen uh, generally for, like, like in uh, word processing, you'd have the tab or the, um, the carriage return, we even have a, a line feed, but you also have uh, alphanumeric characters and symbols. You can see A through A through Z and then you have the lowercase just below that. And you would use a number like 0x41. So let's say we wanted to put just an A on the LCD. We would put 0x41 there. And this simply just sends the character A and then A would be displayed on the LCD. So let's get into the real nuts and bolts of this program. We need to add the code for our routines and we also need to initialize our ports and the control lines for the LCD. So we know that we have the LCD um, wired to the port B and I'm not going to put an initial initialization for port um, a direction for port B because this could be an input and an output depending on whether we are trying to um, read a busy signal and that would be reading from the from the port or we're sending a command or sending a character so we could have either an input or an output for port B but in port D it's always going to be output because we're always going to be sending um, ones or zeros to the enable which is the light switch we're going to be always writing a one or zero to a read write a read is is a one and a write is a zero and the bipolar mood is always going to be a 1 or a 0, depending on where we're going to be sending a command or receiving a status of the busy, or we're going to be sending a command um, or sending a character. Mentioning check busy, we also need to have that as a, as a routine, so let me add that. Void check if Mr. LCD is busy. And this is another void, because we're not going to be passing any information into this routine. Let me take that to the bottom. So let's put it over here. Control V. And we have our code block underneath. Take out the semicolon. Oops. And the void. All of these routines in here may seem like it's getting a little bit busy. Because there are four routines. Um, but when we get farther along and we start to separate this out into another file, this can actually be this can actually be out of our program, and we'll only see the main routine calling these specific um, new commands that we've essentially created. So starting off with the initialization, um, we will need to establish the data direction towards the LCD for the control. We actually didn't put one in the in the top here, so let's go ahead and do that. Data direction for Mr. LCD, and this will be the DD DDRD. We also have to make it for the port B. Uh, let's make it for 
data direction for Mr. LCD control. And define data direction for Mr. LCD, LCD's crib. Let's keep it consistent and use the S. All right, so this will be DDRB. And we can keep that in this, this location. So we have the data direction for the, for the port P or the crib. We have the data direction for the, uh, the control side of things, which are these. And now we can go ahead and set the data direction for the control. And we need to set the light switch using the bitwise OR one for the light switch. And the bitwise OR put a one in the read write place. And bitwise OR put a one in the bipolar mood position. Okay, so we're making sure that uh, whenever we want to use the control, we're always going to be going in the direction of towards the, the LCD. And we're not going to be, the LCD is not going to provide us any information on these lines, so we never need to read from the LCD. So let's go ahead and um, maintain that. Another part of the initialization is making sure that the LCD is fully on. So we need to introduce a delay. And this delay is in, it's about 15 milliseconds. So we wait 15 milliseconds after the microcontroller is on, uh, waiting for the rather slow Mr. LCD to turn on himself. To make this statement work, we need to add the include statement for delays. It's the same one we used before. Now we can go ahead and send commands. But we first need to, to be able to send command, we need to fill out these these code statements or the routines, fill in the code for the routines. We'll start with putting the code into the send a command block. First we need to put the command, the actual character, into that port. And Mr. the port is Mr. LCD's crib. And that's just going to simply equal the command. So now we know that the port B or the Mr. LCD's crib is is fired up with the command on that line and it's going to stay that way until we make uh, until we change this. So we can be confident that uh, when we when we perform the action for the for Mr. LCD to be able to see the command, we will know that it's actually there the whole time. We then need to make sure that he is writing or we are writing to the LCD. So with the control Mr. LCD's control. We want to make sure that the read write is off, which is write mode. If it's on, then that means we're reading from the LCD. So we need to use the and bitwise operation, not. And then we put a one in the read write place. So we are we're nodding this one, so we have a, actually it becomes zero. So we know that the command is on the port. We know that it's in the write mode. And we also need to make sure that he is in the right bipolar mood. So let's go ahead and change that. Mr. LCD. Actually, it's, it's going to be off anyway, so we might as well um, combine it in this, in this statement here. We can turn them both off at the same time using one line and using the or within uh, parentheses. So we do that with the bipolar mood. OK, so we're turning off read-write, which is in the write mode. And then we're turning off bipolar mood, which is in the command mode. And now we can play the peekaboo game. And what this does is that we have all this set up. You know, we're writing to it, we're, we're giving it a command, and we have the command on the port. Now we can flash the light on and then flash the light off so he sees this information. And then he'll act upon it. And just to make sure everything is nice and clean when we're done, we'll go ahead and erase the information from Mr. LCD's crib. This is essentially making sure that Mr. LCD's crib is all zero, so we're not um, providing any voltage on those pins. Okay, we're going to do the same thing to sending a character. So Mr. LCD's crib is going to be equaling the character, which is this information passed in. And then we're going to do the control. We're just going to do copy and paste all this stuff, since it's going to be the same anyway except for the bipolar mood because we need to make sure that he is in he wants to receive a character and display it on the LC LCD so it needs to actually be high so Mr. LCD's 
control. We're going to use the bitwise or operation and put in bipolar mode. Mood. So now he's ready to receive a character because this is there's a one there or it's it's on. You're probably saying to yourself, well, why isn't he setting up his data direction register for the the Mr. Crib, the port B? Well, that's because I'm going to put all that in the, the check if Mr. LCD is busy because this is the only time he's going to be reading. And since this is really the only part of the program we're going to be reading um, and the data direction, data direction is going to be input, we can also bring it back to output when this is done. So this will the rest of the program is always going to be an output um, and it's only going to be an input when it's in, in this location. So let's go ahead and well, let's go ahead and uh, put in the data direction in the checking of busy because we have to do that anyway. So the data direction, Mr. Let's see what I called it. I might as well just go ahead and copy it. Control C, and we need to make sure that this is in the input mode. So we can just say equals zero, and then when we're done with checking if it's busy, because we're gonna we're gonna receive the information, check a particular flag to see if it's busy. And then at the end of that, we're going to make sure that this is back to output. And we're going to use the 0xff, which means all ones all the way across. So I'll go ahead and put a remark here so I can remind it, remind myself. 0xff means the binary of ones all the way across, eight ones, which means that we're putting output for each of the pins. Before we get into the nuts and bolts of reading the busy uh, busy flag for the LCD, let's go ahead and do the simple peekaboo. This is low-hanging fruit, so let's go ahead and get this done. All we're going to do here is we're going to we're going to turn the light switch on, and then we're going to turn the light switch off. So we're going to set Mr. LCD's control, and we're going to first turn the light switch on. We're going to use a bitwise or put a one in the light switch place, and then we're going to use a new um, command called um, ASM, which is assembler, it's assembler language. Uh, we're going to use a word called volatile, which means that this is a dynamic statement and we don't want the compiler, which compiles this into hex code, uh, to compile this out and to optimize it out. Oh, I misspelled it. Yeah, it should be blue. And then we're going to be putting in all of our assembler statements in this, in these parentheses, and using quotations. And the assembler. Um, command that I want to use is NOP. We're going to do this two times because the light switch needs to be on for a little bit of time for Mr. LCD to be able to see our command. So let's go ahead and do Mr. LCD control and we're going to turn this off. We're going to turn the light switch off equals not light switch. Okay so we're turning on the light switch, we're leaving it on for a tiny little bit of time and then we're turning it off. And you can see in and these in this these code blocks we first give the port character so that's always um, on when we're doing this we make sure it's in right mode we make sure we're in the right mood for receiving a character we do the peekaboo so he, we flash this information to it really quickly and then we go ahead and release the uh, release Mr. LCD's crib of all voltage and the same same goes for the command now let's go ahead and get into the check if the uh, Mr. LCD is busy. And if we, we could actually omit this whole part of the, the code and just add a little bit of a delay in between, um, well actually adding a delay um, before the, actually before the, um, the peekaboo. So we could actually add a delay here and a larger delay in, in between and we can be pretty secure that it's going to be uh, our characters are going to be put onto the LCD, but doing it this way, we can actually find out exactly when the LCD is ready to receive information, and we don't have to wait longer than we have to. So we can we can be pretty confident that our information is going to be displayed on the LCD really fast. So the first thing we need to make sure this is doing, let's spread this out a little bit, is that it's in read mode. So let's make sure that Mr. LCD's control is in read mode. And read mode means that we're going to have a, the read write should be on. So we're going to use the bitwise or operation and we're going to put a one in the read write place. And we also need to make sure that the bipolar is in the command mode. So Mr. LCD's control, we're using the, the and not to put a zero in there. 
and the bipolar mode. Bipolar mode. So we're turning off bipolar mode, which puts it in command mode. And now we can go ahead and check or do a, a loop that checks the LCD until it is ready to receive information. We're going to have some kind of while here, while. And we're going to have this equaling some kind of condition we don't know yet. And then we'll have a little code block in, uh, just below the while, so it'll execute this while statement until the we know that the flag is, is not busy. So we're going to actually test the flag here inside this the parentheses where we're going to place the condition. And in here, all we're going to do is the peekaboo. And all we're going to do is flash the light on and off, on and off, until we, and every time it flashes on and off, it gives us information. It, it populates our uh, Mr. LCD's crib with information, and we can keep looking at that information. So let's go ahead and say if Mr. or do this, do the peekaboo while the while the uh, Mr. LCD is busy, LCD's crib, while Mr. LCD's crib is busy. And by busy, according to the data sheet for the LCD, uh, the D7, which is um, on port B, pin 7, that, that will be a 1 if it's busy when we're reading. If it's a 0, that means it's not busy. So let's go ahead and um, try to figure out an easy way to figure out if D7 will be 1. And a good way to, to, uh, to determine this is, let's take a look at the binary number, 0B100000000. So this would be equal to the hex equivalent of 0x. The first four digits would be an 8, because 1000 is 8 in hex, as we learned from the, a couple videos past. And then obviously, the next four zeros is just a zero, so we can just put zero. So the hex equivalent of one with seven zeros past it would be eight zero in hex. Now we can say, well, what if, you know, just, uh, you know, the D7 would be one, but there's another one in here somewhere. Let's put a one over here. Well, this would be something greater than 80 hex. So we could be pretty safe to say if um, it is busy if this is greater than or equal to 80 hex. So let's just go ahead and try that. Greater than or equal to 0x80. So now that we know that anything greater than uh, greater than or equal to 80 in hex, there's always a one in the in the the seventh pin or the seventh eighth digit of the binary number. So we can safely say that um, it's busy if it's greater than or equal to 80. And this is it for the check if Mr. LCD is busy. So let's go ahead and, and see what else we need to do. So theoretically, all of this information should work. Um, all the code in here should be correct. So let's go ahead and um, continue on with our commands, because we need, still need to work on initialization and make sure that our commands are um, correct for initializing the actual screen and sending certain commands to the LCD. The first thing that needs to be noted is when sending a command to clear the screen, um, in the data sheet it says it takes about 1.53 milliseconds. And we can't really check to see if the LCD is busy in this portion of it not that I have, have come across. So we're just going to go ahead and add a time delay of 2 milliseconds. And since we wired this LCD up for 8 wires on the port or 8-bit mode, we need to send that command as well and to make sure that it knows that we're doing that. And the command just happens to be 0x38. And you can verify this on you can verify this on a um, on the data sheet. And also according to the data sheet, this takes around 39 milliseconds. Or I'm sorry, 39 microseconds. So to be safe, I'll probably use 50 microseconds. And we use the delay. Um, underscore us for microseconds and we're just putting a 50 in the parentheses for 50 microseconds and in the next command we need to control the display and the cursor so we're gonna send another com command and this one we're gonna do in in binary form because it's actually easy to understand it this way we'll start we'll start off with eight zeros or zero in all of the bits and to use this function, we actually start with the 
actually one in the um, fourth, the fourth uh, bit, and the one next to it, this one right here, is going to be either if the display is on or off. So we want to make sure the display is on. The next position is to specify whether the cursor is going to be on or off. We want the cursor to be on, so we know where that's located and where the next character will be positioned. And then the next one is whether you want the cursor to be blinking or not. And I, I prefer the cursor not to be blinking, so I'm going to leave it to zero. But if you like the blinking cursor, which is a, a whole block of it blinking, you can set that to one. And according to the data sheet, this takes about 39 microseconds, so we'll use the 50 microseconds delay. So this is really all it takes to initialize the LCD. We're, put, we're clearing the screen first, we're putting it in 8-bit mode, and we're um, controlling the display on and off and the cursor. Now we can have some fun and start displaying the actual characters. I'm going to display the characters newbiehack.com and we're going to do one at a time. Displaying characters like this may seem a bit tedious, but in the next video I'll show you how to display an entire string in one command. And a string is just a, a sort of a string, string of characters. So let's start with the N, and we have to actually look for the N on the right hand side here. So the N is, is 0x4e. Okay, so let's, I'm going to do a copy and paste of all these. Let's start with all of these as blanks. So that's E, W, B, I, E, H, A, C, K, dot, C, O, M. Okay, so this is giving me a reference of what I need to look up when I put the numbers in here. So we're going to send another character of the E. So let's look up the lowercase e. And I'm going to put it to a point where I can see most of the characters, almost to the Z, so I probably won't need to change it for a little while. So the E will be 0x65. The next one will be W, and that is 77. The B is 62. The I is 69. And the E is the same as this one, 65. And then the H is the uppercase H, so we have to go back up here. That's 48, 48 right there. Then the A, lowercase a, 61. C is x63. K is 6b. I'm going to use uppercase b for that. And the dot, I think it's up here. Could be wrong. Nope, got it. 0x2e. The C, let's go back down to the lowercase, 63. The O is 6F. And the M is 6D. So we have our newbiehack.com, one after another. It's going to place the characters one after another because well, at default, the, the, um, the cursor will increment automatically. And it should display newbiehack.com across the LCD on the top line. Let's go ahead and check all of the program just to see if I made any syntactical errors. And it looks like I have this LDC should be LCD. <coughs> and everything looks pretty good. And we actually forgot to put in the check if busy into these into the sending command and sending a character. So let's go ahead and do that first before we start making it and programming it. So we need to, before we do any command or any character, we need to make sure that it's not busy while we're trying to do that. So we're going to check if Mr. LCD is busy. And we're going to do that for the command and for the character. So we're adding that in the beginning making sure that the LCD is ready to receive information and it should be able to display it if it's not busy. Uh, let's see, we forgot to uppercase the F here because that's the way it is in, the, in this location. So let's go ahead and make and program the microcontroller and see if we have success. When you're programming the microcontroller, you want to make sure that the LCD is 
out of the breadboard because this can actually conf uh, conflict because it's on port B and there's an SPI interface that we're using to program it. It can it can conflict with the um, with the programming. So we want to make sure that we first take this LCD off. We can plug in the programmer and we can go ahead and program. Now I've already programmed it, uh, so I'm just going to show you what happens when it was programmed. So I'm going to take it off because if I just plugged in the LCD while this was plugged in, it won't do that one um, strip of commands and sending characters. We would miss it completely, so we would have to actually <clears throat> put in the LCD first and then apply power to it. So let me do that. And now we're going to apply power and we should see something on the screen. And sure enough, we have newbiehack.com across the LCD. In the next video, I will show you how to write this in one command or one string. And we'll also show how to put numbers on the LCD. So when we're testing out some, um, some sensors, we can find out what the digital equivalent of the sensor reading is. Thanks for watching.